Well, welcome to this video, which is going to look at one of the new features for Houdini 13. Perhaps not the most exciting feature that's new in Houdini 13, but uh, something worth exploring, which is the new mosaic method of rendering sprites. Uh, and in previous versions of Houdini, uh, if you wanted to render particles as sprites, it was really quite complicated to get a different image on each particle. So the new method allows you to do this uh, quite easily. So let me in fact go first of all into the compositing view and we'll have a look at some images that I've got already on disk. And let's find those here. And they're very simple. All I've got is a series of letters a, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I. And in order to use this uh, method of rendering, we need to combine all of these images into a single grid of images. And new in Houdini 13 is a way to do that. And it's the mosaic cop. Now, in this case, I've, I've got nine images. So let me just uh, put the maximum images here to nine and have three images per row. And what we should find then is that we've got uh, all of these lined up, as you can see, in a grid. And I just need to write that out to disk because we're going to use this later. So let me put down a rock file output and let me save this to a pic file here, sprite single. And I'm just going to render a single frame, like so. And that's done. So the next thing to do is to set up a particle system. And particles have changed a lot in Houdini 13. I'm not going to go through all the details of that now. Uh, but let's just uh, set up uh, some particles being emitted from a single point. So we want uh, the location particle emitter. So I click that and I can place that anywhere. But I'll just hit enter to place it at the origin. And then we'll see that a whole lot of particles will be emitted and they'll fall down. Uh, and the reason they're falling down, and this is uh, a different behavior from what you would have seen in Houdini 12, is because the particle system is now part of an auto.network and as a result uh, the auto.network which by default has a gravity node here at the bottom that gravity is being applied to our particles we can in fact uh, turn that off by turning off the external forces and then as you can see the particles just expand out like so now we've got far too many particles here so let me go up to my, let's expand this and just have a look at the network. So you'll be familiar, if you're familiar with particles, with this location node. That's the same as the node you would have seen in Houdini 12 inside a pop network. But now it's inside a dot network and it's connected to this pop solver and to a pop object. Well, the pop object, whoops, let's just reconnect that. The pop object is the holder, if you like, for the particles. The pop solver is the thing that applies the nodes uh, on this side to those particles. And these nodes are broadly speaking the same as you would have seen in a pop network in Houdini 12. So this location node, let's bring up this, we can see that we're birthing uh, 5,000 particles a second. And, and I probably want something near a five because I just want a few particles in order that we can see the different sprites later on. So we should now see that that's just emitting a few particles like so. The next thing I need to do is to ensure these particles are rendered as sprites. So let's, let's do that and we can do that using a shelf tool. Let me just make sure we've got some particles in our scene and then if we go along here 
on the particles tab we can see that there's the sprite particle button so I can click that and that immediately turns these into sprites and what we can see is that this has added a new node here to our Autodot network which is a pop sprite node which is broadly speaking the same as the pop sprite or the sprite node in a pop network in Houdini 12 except that there are a couple of extra features here and those are the things we're going to be concentrating on. So we can see what that button has done has it's altered the material here on the location particles node and this is the node that was created when we used the location particles button here and all this is doing is it's a familiar uh, dop import it's importing those particles from the dot network uh, and we're now using a sprite shader on them and let's just uh, change this uh, so it's not rendering a cloud anymore let's just use one of our uh, let's use one of our letters and as we can see nothing immediately happens here if we rewind we can see now those are all letter A's and if we render this using the viewpoint the viewport uh, we can also see hopefully that we get a load of letter A's so how do we vary uh, the picture that each individual particle is using. Well we can do that uh, using uh, an expression and using the new texture crop feature. So the texture crop feature has uh, two modes, one of which here just allows you to crop the, the texture using fixed values here. We might animate the values but uh, they're basically fixed or we can use a sprite sheet and the sprite sheet allows you to treat this picture as a grid of smaller pictures and then pick one of those pictures from the grid so let's change this to a sprite single which was that grid of pictures we created earlier uh, and that's uh, not reloaded the texture but never mind we can see it's reloaded it here we're getting all nine letters at each at each particle position uh, and if we then uh, change the index here what we should see is that this renders if we can get it to re-render that's rendering all of them ah that's because of course I haven't set up the rows and columns correctly now our sheet our grid was three rows long and three rows tall uh, and that that was nine images in total and we can see now that uh, sprite index one is giving us a B sprite index uh, two should give us a C a D an E and so on so how do we relate this sprite index parameter to the particle uh, ID that the, the, so that each particle will have a different letter attached to it. Well, you can't in this case use standard expressions to uh, give a, a, a an index here based on the ID number. That doesn't work in this version of Pops. You can't use those kind of expressions. They're, they're not. If we have a look at the help card here in a second. When this comes up, we'll see that dollar ID isn't a, a variable uh, that we can use here. There we are. We can see the variables there. It doesn't have dollar ID, so we, we can't use that. And that's because the new version of, of POPs in Houdini 13 prefers you to use VEX expressions. So let's tick the use VEX expressions box. Let me stop this rendering. And the use VEX expressions box lets us set any of these values using a VEX expression. And a VEX expression is very similar to standard expressions. Uh, those of you who've seen the side effects tutorials on the, the point wrangle node, for example, will be familiar with VEX expressions. 
Now, there's a useful uh, little selector here which allows us to do pass through. So what pass through is doing is just setting the value of each of these things to its input. So it's, it's just setting all of these things to the values here in the parameter box. And the thing I'm interested in is sprite index. Like so. Uh, where are we? Sprite scale. Texture index. Texture index is, I think, what we're looking for. There we are. We can see that it's actually called texture index. So this is what we're going to change. And the we're going to use an attribute. And I'm going to use at id. And id is the attribute for the ID number of the particle and each particle have a different ID. So we can uh, put ID, at ID is going to get that attribute and by putting a little I before it we tell uh, VEX in effect that this is an integer attribute. And how did I know uh, that that was a uh, an integer attribute? Well if I can down a pop vop. Uh, I'm doing this just so that we get the globals. We can see in the globals here in the pop vop that lists all of the attributes that are available by default. And we can see that we've got id here, little i, little d. And we can see here that it's an integer. So that's that's how I knew that this was an integer. And what we should now find. is that uh, this is going to produce, let me rewind it, this will produce a different letter for each particle. And we can actually see that. Let me zoom in our, our view. And we can see it here rendered, in fact, in the, in the OpenGL viewport quite clearly. There's a lots of overlapping letters and we can see it too here in the render view. So that is correctly producing a different letter for each particle and in order to uh, make that easier to see let me only emit particles when the frame is less than 24. So we're only going to emit particles for the first 24 frames and that's going to mean that these will eventually drift apart. There we are. And we can see that uh, quite clearly now there's a different letter for each. Obviously it's rather boring to, to use just letters. Uh, you could use any kind of animated sequence. Uh, you can use a different, uh, a different uh, sprite for each, for each particle. And in the next section, I'm going to show you how to uh, change the sprite according to the age of the particle. So how will we go about changing the sprite that's used according to the age of the particle? And I can do that uh, using the age attribute. And we can see there's an, an age attribute here. If we go down to our pop pop, add it to float. So that means that instead of using i at dollar id at id I can use at age and because it's a float attribute I don't actually need to put the f in front now that's going to be a floating point value I'm going to need to convert it into an integer and there's a function called floor which will do that so floor just takes a value like 1.32 and gives it returns the lowest integer uh, that's less than that, uh, the highest integer rather, that's less than that number. So for the floor of 1.5 will be 1, the floor of 1.9 will be 1, and so on. And I'm going to multiply this up a little bit, let's say by 3. And what we should now see is that as we go through here, there we go, we can see that it starts off with A's, then B's, 
then C's, then D's, then E's, and so on. So that's one way of using sprites, using the new mosaic uh, cop and the pop sprite stop to, to render sprites using different images for each sprite. I hope that's been useful.